Hello, hello everybody. In the previous video, previously on draw and repeat, we were drawing a human muscular system. So today it will be the human skeletal system. And I'm going to copy pretty much the same style that I used to make sure that the body proportions are right. I can even copy the same size of the oval for the head. But remember, you are not going to draw a circle. You're going to draw an oval. In fact, copy this, this technique from me. Don't erase it. Make sure that you draw an oval. Then you can erase any other mistakes. But don't try to draw and then erase and then redraw. You drew the same mistake again. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways. Here's another te technique that I found on how to make sure that proportions are more or less accurate. Doing a quick search on how to draw accurate body proportions, I found other measuring systems like this one where the entire body is made up of seven heads. Other artists fit in eight heads, which is a system that I agree with the most. And of course, it sounds weird, but it looks even weirder if you draw it literally. I will not ask you to draw the head eight times total or seven and a half times total, but we are going to use it as a way to check our progress and make sure that it, it, it does look more or less proportionate. I am going to draw a stick figure just like I did for the muscle drawing, and I will fit the distance or the size of the head as many times, no, actually just three times inside of the torso line. There we go. That tells me how long the torso will be. After that, I'm going to find somewhere on the upper, on the upper third of it, I'm going to draw a horizontal line for the shoulders and then a smaller, shorter line for the hips. Remember that the shoulders have to be able to fit in the arms, not just the body and the hips. That's why it's a thicker, it's a longer line over there. Then I practice the shape of an oval. And it's going to remind you of the lungs. The lungs are protected by the rib cage. Well, pardon my cuckoo clock behind me. It just went nuts out there. Now I take the measurement of the torso and I'm going to draw the knees. You might be thinking that this is a little bit too tall, but it's actually the same measurements for grown-ups as for children, except babies. Babies have different proportions and you are welcome to use uh, to measure anybody from a distance don't go out there touching people without their consent and then the elbows you'll notice that the elbows have to be where the rib cage stops more or less the upper leg the upper leg the upper arm has about the same distance as the forearm and now we're going to draw the hand I have to split the hand into two sections or two planes. The first one will be the palm of the hand, which is the same distance as the fingers, pretty much. I mean, it's, it's not a, an accurate measurement, but it's kind of an estimation. The thumb will be closer to the thigh. And coming out of the palm of the hand, you will have the rest of the fingers, index, middle finger, ring finger, and the little finger. Don't forget to make sure that the the middle finger is longer, followed by the index, and then, no wait, not the index, the ring, ring finger, and then index, and the last one would be the pinky. You're going to do the same thing on the opposite hand. The thumb will be closer to the face, and coming out directly from the wrist. Don't forget the fingers, the rest of the fingers, the four fingers come out from the palm of the hand. Measure. Up next, I'm not going to draw the eyes at the top. Don't do that. The eyes go in the middle of the oval. Because this is a skeleton, I'm going to draw the eye sockets. Skeletons should not really have eyes unless, like they don't have eyeballs. After that, I'm just going to be drawing a rectangle, a very simple rectangle for the mouth. And I'm going to add some cheekbones under the eyes. And I will connect those lines to 
the teeth, that rectangle that I drew. Again, this we're not going to make sure that we have all of the teeth in there. We're just kind of using, making a very stylized version of a skeleton that people are able to still recognize and that it will still give us enough information to recognize uh, basic bones in the human body. So it looks more or less okay. And because it looks more or less okay, you know what? I'm going to trace it with a black pen. If you don't have one, then that's, that's okay. That's okay. You can use your pencil for this. That's okay. But I really want this to show up on the camera and it's going to show up um, if you have it in person, it's really going to pop. And I drew the eyes just a little bit on the angry side, then the nostrils. And I'm just going to trace the things that I do want to keep of this drawing. You're going to start noticing that now that I'm tracing it, you can see it much better. It is clearer. This is great for your own drawings. Don't always leave them with pencil lines in there. If you trace it a little bit darker with another color or with a crayon or a marker or a pen, it's going to pop. It's going to show show so much better than with pencil alone. Now, before I draw the clavicle, first I'm going to draw that little gap that lies above it. And from that little circle, then I draw a line that goes from the bottom to the top of the horizontal line. It's almost like the wings of a bird. After that, I'm drawing each of the vertices that go up the neck. They are all part of your back, every single one of those pieces. Now, the sternum. Now, the sternum just sort of reminds me of like a squished out burrito. So, you know, just get those vibes in, burrito, squished out burrito, and you know, you'll be, you'll be kind of okay with with the sternum. Now, here comes the most difficult part of their drawing. Every single rib that I'm going to draw is going to follow the shape of the oval. Notice how I wrap it around the oval and I am more or less leaving the same space between each of those ribs. Notice how I start it and I bring it around. It needs to end very curvy. It's going to take a while, so just, just make sure that you check your work more or less. The bottom ribs tend to get smaller and smaller. Now, I checked this online. We have got 12 pairs of ribs, no matter the gender, for a total of 24. Um, in my drawing, I ended up with seven pairs so it's okay just know that we are supposed to end up with way more ribs than why I, what I ended up drawing. Just know that it's it's a stylized drawing more or less so that we can still recognize but it's not anatomically correct. Now I just showed you by twisting my paper sideways that if you draw if you draw it sideways it's not going to end up being as good just make sure that you always keep your drawing um, vertical facing towards you now let's draw the humerus every time there are two joints or two bones connecting that's where the that's the thickest the bone is going to be so make sure that you draw the bone very thick closer before it meets another bone pretty much up next the radius and the ulna the ulna is going to be like really really skinny so just just try to copy the same technique i'm kind of drawing the thickness of the bone and i use that same straight line that i had drawn before to help me uh, kind of keep it as a very straight bone but again we're just we're just trying our best over here now <laughs> the pelvis. That one is a hard one. And I want you to think of it more or less as a very messed up Mickey Mouse ears. Under the horizontal line, I'm going to draw two ovals and then a mask around them. It's almost, uh, I think that's where the coccyx is. And then the top of the Mickey Mouse ears the hips will be the actual Mickey Mouse ears, and hey, well, it kind of looks accurate. 
So now coming down from the ribs, you can draw the rest of the vertebrae. Think of them as ovals or very soft and squishy round um, squares going down the spine. Up next, the longest bone in the body, femur. Remember, it is at its thickest every, thickest every time it is meeting another bone. Then the patella. And again, more thick bones. The bones need to be thicker over there, I think, because um, you're putting a lot of pressure between the bones. Every time bones are meeting each other, they have, they have to be at their thickest so that they can withstand all the weight, all the pressure that we put on them. After that, the fibula. More or less, it looks looks good. It's it's looking good so far. And then, hey, let's just um, I think I'm going to draw the fingers now. Hey, <laughs> I will leave the feet for later, for the end. I split the palm of the hand in two parts. One for the tarsus. The other half is for the metatarsus. And then after that, I'm going to make sure that I draw the phalanges. We have we have three on those fingers. One, two, and three. Pretty much every time your finger bends, that's a phalange right there. The difference is that um, the thumb, it looks like the third phalange is part, uh, it, it's connected straight to your wrist. So that's why I didn't draw the thumb connected to the palm of the hand. I drew it coming out of the wrist. And I'm just sort of drawing skinny little ovals following the shape of the line. Well, not the shape of the line, the direction of the line it is going in. I didn't do this in the, in the video or in the final drawing, but I'm telling you now that I'm editing the video that you could continue drawing as if it was an extra phalange on the palm of the hand, uh, just so that you don't leave it just empty there. Now for the feet, you're going to uh, draw the tarsus and metatarsus, and then you're going to split that one in half. The feet on the foot on the left, I'm just trying out, trying things out, and, and I'm going to compare it to the right side, but uh, spoiler alert, I really liked, I preferred the one I drew on the right side better than the left. So we're going to go with what I did on the right side. I'm comparing them and then I'm just going to erase the one on the left. And I'm going to make sure that both feet are the same length. Remember, you are not going to twist your paper at any angle. You're going to keep it as if you were on helicopter view or drone view. You are not going to do a microscopic view where you are like breathing on top of the paper. If you do that, um, everything looks so great when you are breathing on top of the paper, but you have to keep your distance from the paper. That way you make sure that you are measuring and that you, you, can, tell, you can tell exactly what you're doing. You can continue tracing with your pen or just trace darker with your pencil or whatever is your, your preference. Once you are done, I suggest that you also label the bones. And, and just like in the previous video, the more you refer to the, the bone, the actual bone by its name, the more it will become part of your vocabulary. And these are just words that you're going to keep using throughout the rest of your life. When learning to draw anime style, you don't really need to learn this part, unless you're a fan of Attack on Titan or something. This is more helpful to learn how to draw realistically. I hope that you had fun. Take care. Goodbye.